morning to you you my hot viewers you are watching kbn tv on channel 102 on top star and channel 279 on dstv now you know what time it is this is woman on the move yes a show that brings to you the finest women the movers and shakers who are inspiring other women to take the lead in the society i am your host yande nambela and today i'm with the hottest artist and with me is miss maveka kapungwe an artist and a student and today we find out more how she works and how she does her thing in the art industry welcome maveka how are you i'm good thanks how are you i'm fine how are you feeling how's the christmas going uh, it's so amazing okay it's what do you, do you have any preparations not yet. Not yet. Why? Why? <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> <laughs> On the 25th? <laughs> yeah. Right. Anyway, well, let's get into the business, Maweka. I'm so inspired by what you do and others have been inspired by, by, by what you are doing. So could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Who is Maweka Kapungwe? I think, uh, firstly, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here today. So, uh, my name is Maveka Kapungwe, as you already said. I'm an artist and I'm a poet. Okay. Yes, I'm a student at the University of Zambia doing development studies and sociology as my minor. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in my third year, okay, practically going to fourth year next year. Okay. So, yeah. so that is you. Yeah. That's just Maveka doing sociology and development studies. So, how do you link that, the courses you're doing with your art? Yeah, so Why? Guess, mm -hmm. Okay, like I said, um, I'm an artist and a poet, and I really love what I'm studying because it's kind of in line with what I do. We learn a lot of things that are going, that society is going through issues like gender-based violence, mm -hmm. divorce, racism, and the like. So uh, I kind of link those things by, uh, most of my paintings are African, like they are to do with Afrocentrism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I paint African women, color bashes and all like things about gender-based violence, body uh -huh. shaming and the like. So those mm -hmm. things are kind of linked and I really love what I do. Right. So when did this desire for art begin? When did you realize that, oh, I think I'm, I'm in love with drawing, I'm in love with art. And when did the desire for actually drawing um, things connected to gender-based violence, to gender equality, racism, when did you feel that, yes, this is what I'm drawn to? Okay, firstly, I started drawing way back, like, in, maybe, let me say, primary school, like, on a Friday when we were having CTS, like, mm. I don't know, my teachers would compliment me, saying my works are looking nice, like, I didn't really realize that I was an artist by then, I used to be more creative, I used to draw simple things like flowers, then afterwards, in high school, Actually, after high school, that's when I discovered that, oh, I can actually draw something that I can sell. Mm -hmm. Then it's re it's recent in university when I discovered that I can actually I uh, use this thing that I love doing as a weapon for social change. Right. So uh, just as you have mentioned that you would actually make a living out of um, the artworks that you are doing, when, as, as a woman in the industry especially now that it's not even common. How has that been for you? Because we've only heard that men are the ones who draw. We've never really seen women showcasing their art or coming to the front line and say, I'm an artist and this is what I'm going to do. So how has that been knowing that there are a few women in the art industry? Or maybe we do not know that there are a lot of, you know, <laughs> women in the art industry. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, actually, we are few. There are very mm -hmm. few female artists that I've met. Very few. And the few that I've met are amazing, but I think we need more women in the art industry because sometimes you tell someone, I'm the one who did this, and they'll be arguing, they're like, no, a, ca a girl can't, can't do, do that. this. And right. Yeah, I think it's time society let go of such notions and such thoughts because we are equal. Like, okay, we are, yeah, men and women can do this. We can all do art. That's what I think. So mm. women should step out. They shouldn't be, feel, they shouldn't feel left out out there. They shouldn't be you know, like suppressed and, oh, we should shine our light, we should come out and do what we can because be it a man or a woman, art is for everyone. Right, and you've mentioned um, 
on how somebody wouldn't believe of the art that you're doing. So I'm sure that some challenges that you felt despite that very one that you have just mentioned, what are yeah. some of the things you have faced that have really made you feel a bit unsure of maybe doing continuing with art or maybe how did you maneuver that particular challenge? Yeah, okay, Mo mostly I feel like Zambians don't really appreciate art. Mm -hmm. like you can, I remember when I was selling tickets for my first exhibition that I had last week, uh, you'd find people, are, their reaction wasn't that good for everyone. You find mm. some, they're just disinterested. Like, maybe you knock on a lecturer's door, like, I'm having this event, yeah. and all, oh, they're just like, no, no, no. Like, it was so discouraging. Right. There are times when I just wake up, like, I, I can't do this anymore. Mm. But it's just the passion that I have that keeps me going. But sometimes you find people discouraging you, you find others who discourage you. Actually, I noticed that there are very few people that really understand the real essence, the power, and the value of art in Zambia. So right. that's something we have to really work on work as a nation. On. Yes, and you've spoken of um, you having the passion, even though lecturers, even though many people did not respond well maybe to the exhibition. However, um, what does it really mean to you? I know it's passion, but what does it mean to you as Mavika with your art? Mm, art means so much to me. For me, first... I think it's something that gives me peace, like right. I can fully express myself through art mm. and I, c I can also address challenges that society goes through like, um, like racism right. through art. I feel art is more than what we see, art is everywhere, I think everything that comprises, society comprises of has a touch of art somewhere, like I think art is just everything because you go to places the clothes we wear is art right the buildings we're in they have to be fashioned in a certain, certain way, way that's right art. basically everything is just art i remember yeah. like when yeah Everything is just art. And people should understand that art is what we are today. Everything we're wearing, as Ma Maveka is saying, is art. Our bandanas, our hair, everything is art. Even in the room we are in, it's art. It comes from somebody drawing the perspective of the design that you want. Yeah. But um, going forward, why is it that um, guardians, parents may not help you pursue, let's say, your career in art because they feel maybe it's something that you cannot um, make a living out of why do you think the notion is still there you know when somebody when a kid comes and says oh daddy oh mommy I draw and they'll be like ah, wait. <laughs> there's nothing you can do there's nothing you can make of it how did your family help you through your career and if maybe others did not how did you go through that yeah that's actually a very interesting question because uh, growing up I think you hear things like uh, Art, the more than art, like <laughs> yes. you can't make money through art in Zambia. That's what people believe. And even if, like, even if, like, when I told my parents I would like to study art, they're like, no, like, <laughs> they just wouldn't agree. Right. Yeah, because it is believed that you can't make money through art. I think the notion is also coming from the part of society not supporting art, not understanding mm. art, and also. But on my part, I'm so grateful because my parents have been so supportive. My mom, my mm. dad. They would allow me to, they would give me time to paint, they would allow me, you just know it's hectic, like you have so much material, you have so much going on and mm. I'm just grateful that they, for the space they've alluded, like, they've just given me my own space to paint, they've allowed right. me, they've given me time, they'd spare me of chores sometimes, they'd allow me to do what I want and that's something I'm so grateful for. Right, and um, I think to the parents, let's continue inspiring, let's continue helping um, our children or other people to maneuver over um, careers that people think cannot be actually celebrated or they cannot do. Just like here, Miss Maveka Kapungwe is an artist and she's being um, nominated or she's being allowed in a school like Onza to actually do her showcasing. So last week she did have an exhibition where she had Mr. Rosia Siatwambo, Mr. Fred Membe and many other people came to support her work. How did that go at the exhibition? Uh, it actually went well, better than I expected. I had right. people coming to support, people came to see my works and then uh, the exhibition was exciting because it wasn't only like visual arts, the paintings that I do, we also had portraits, we had poetry, 
we had dance, we mm. had authors, we had African fashion design. We just put different forms of art together. together. It was so exciting. Wow. And I feel um, this should be pushed more in, in Zambia to have this. I mean, we see a lot of um, events for art. We see jazz and coffee. They do have a bit of African um, paintings here and there. We also see some art exhibitions. But why is it that not many people understand the backstory of the art? Well, I think it's because of how we've been brought up and mm. the notions that society has had. I think art is something that should be more like a compulsory course, starting from way back in children mm -hmm. must be groomed in such a way that they understand the value and the power of art just as they are growing up so right. that by the time we're adults because it's really difficult to just implant an idea in someone, someone. who's already mm. fully grown and also i think that's something we should take up as uh, a nation and and i think we should start to look at things in a different light because right. most of us believe you just have to go to school i know school is important yes it's very important but Beyond that school, I think what's more important is what you do with that education. You can just mm -hmm. get educated and be with your degree, but I think we should look forward to creating employment rather than waiting for the government to employ us. Finish school, I think we should focus more on our, our talents, improve them. Like, I can open an art gallery or something and just a company actually and employ other people rather than waiting for the government to employ me and working elsewhere. Right. Where it's not even art related. I think meaning I'll be wasting my. I think we'd thrive more if we focus on the things that we are passionate about as youths. Mm -hmm. And looking at some of the paintings that you have done, do you have? Um, I know we've spoken about it that you 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 your paintings are more on racism, gender equality, GBV, and the likes. And Africa, um, you said Afrocentric is the theme of your of your paintings. But do you have a mood, a particular mood that you do? That you have when you are actually painting a mood okay i'm just always expectant like because uh, i also don't know the outcome I imagine in something it could go either way so right i'm also just usually anxious and just what can i say i'm always looking forward to see the outcome of that particular thing so does it mean when you are in a good mood you're going to have a good uh, painting or when you're in a bad mood it's going to be something else <laughs> what is what what happens in the middle because i i don't understand you know i can see a painting and maybe it's abstract and i don't i don't see like what is this painting so what does somebody go through for them to actually put across a message and how does that um cross over to the next person like me let's say i attend your exhibition uh -huh. how am i supposed to really see what you have, what, have what you have done and make me understand you know because i mean maybe that's why people don't even attend art exhibitions because they don't understand yeah so the, i couldn't say there's something like a specific mood it's, mm -hmm. you have to be motivated motivation is the mood right but then because you can either be sad or happy. You can paint something great when you're mm. really sad or angry or you're happy. But the thing is, you have to be motivated. So that motivation will drive you. Like, I have to do this. So I have to continue and I have to. Yeah. Right. Also, I'm inspired by what you're doing because you are a student. You are still in school and you are painting. But how is that going for you? Because school can be stressful. And you're out here showing the world, like, I can paint, I can do this. How does that make you feel? And how do you work around school and painting? Maybe let's say a big name comes in, like Rosia Satombo, like, could you paint me? Like, how, does, how do you work around school and painting? Because some people would actually feel like I don't need to get into a business or I can't get to my talent because school, school is hectic. Well. Yes. Well, for me... Uh I just just make sure that you study something that you enjoy doing. Study something that I don't know that your passion. Cause school can be frustrating. School can be hard, especially if you are just forced. Your parents are like, go and be a doctor when you're not even passionate. About. You're going to find that to be frustrating, and you just focus on that. It's like you'll be struggling. You strive mm -hmm. more than. But for someone who's like, I want to do development studies, sociology, because you understand what it is. Right. I think that would be easier. Not that school is really easy for me, but. I just have to balance, like, mm. I have to be, that's why you have to be really determined, because usually uh, 
I find time to paint like when I'm not having classes. Maybe I have three classes a day in the morning and also I attend my classes, find time to study in the evening, but between that time you can paint a bit and you finish tomorrow and all that. So just, I think, have a schedule, plan your day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, so she's spoken about planning and you also spoke about expect expectations. And what do you look forward to yourself? What do you see yourself as? in the near future do you dream of having an art gallery and maybe giving trainings to us workshops you know teaching us how to draw or just come up with um something do you look forward to anything in the future yeah that's an interesting question because i have big dreams right. i have really big dreams i want to employ youths i want to actually i want to register my company with pakra first right and then uh, later on after school i want to build a gallery a big i want to build the biggest art gallery in zambia or rather in africa the biggest mm -hmm. and mm. i want my artworks to be there to be teaching people art there to have a paint and sit kind of setup See, right just yeah Showing so i have plans for art for what you look forward to right and what would you tell some of the upcoming artists in Zambia and around the world. I'm sure they're seeing and they're inspired by the works you are doing. I mean, you are a student and you have an art um, space for yourself and you have a little art um, gallery at your place. Um, how do, how, what would you tell some artists who may, may not have that kind of um, space? Like you, wh where could they be or what would you advise them? Yeah, what I would advise is that uh, they should continue doing, like it's really discouraging doing art in Zambia sometimes of which I hope it will change, but you have to be your own motivation. You have to, you have to hang on in there because art is a good thing and don't be discouraged. Keep creating. There are times when you do something great and no one not even notices you. Like you post something and people don't even like it. It seems that people don't see, but people actually do see and appreciate your work. So just keep creating, never give up because um, you might think that what you're doing isn't, you know, isn't worthy or anything, but it is, it counts. In the near future, it's going to pay off. So just keep doing what you're doing. Don't give up. Right. And speaking of not giving up, how do you think women could come together and be appreciated in the industry? What should be done in that light? Because many of us women are not given the opportunity to do such things like painting, like singing. Well, singing maybe has become a norm. Everybody can sing. Some, you know, the musicians are out there. We can see women more in the industry. But in, in the light of poetry, acting and art, what do you think must be done or should be done to embrace women and accept that they could actually do works like yourself? Yeah, I think we should be given more opportunities. Uh, we should, the country should create more platforms where all these things can be showcased. We should support, like, because I remember when I was planning my exhibition, I was looking for sponsors and all, but there was just nothing available. I think we should have such things, like we should have the government at least sponsor such events and all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we should come together as women. We should support each. Uh, we should yeah. support each other, not bringing each other down. down. Like, yeah, because most people I don't know on social media, people are just there, you know, pulling yeah. others down. down. We can only rise when we join hands together. That's the only way we can build a better Zambia. And like, we only have each other as women, so we should learn to empower each other and support each other whenever you can. Encourage someone, build someone up. Let them know that you care. Right. Yeah. Um, speaking of how you like women and the government should come together, um, what more should we do as um, individuals, as yourself? What do you think um, individuals should bring to the table first? You know, because sometimes maybe people have seen your work, but maybe we are not doing too much as a human being or as an individual in that particular space. So um, I think it's important first to work on yourself. Mm -hmm. That's because you are your biggest asset. I think that was the biggest takeaway I got from the exhibition and from Dr. Wezas' speech. He was mm -hmm. like, work on yourself because we like rushing as youths. You just want to rise to the top. But I think we should take much time in investing on ourselves, building connections, mm. develop your skill, take your time, work on yourself, work on your speech, work on everything possible that you can work on as yourself so that when you are showing what you have to the world 
they won't have a choice. They won't like reject you because you've taken years to build that thing. You have something worthy that you can bring to the table. Yes. Okay. And position yourself, build connections. Just, I think, position yourself out there so that when opportunities come, it will be easy for you to grasp. In, fa- in short, be ready. Yeah, just be ready. Like, set yourself. Like, even if opportunities are not there, at least be able to prepare yourself so that when mm-hmm. opportunities come, it will be easier for you to seize them. Right. If you are just joining us, this is a woman on the move and we are concluding with miss maveka kapungwe who is an artist and a student now before we close we would like to know where maveka is found how we can actually purchase her paintings where we can see them and how much they are at the moment so before as we conclude would you tell us um how much your products are where we can find them where we can see them and just experience the art um of maveka kapungwe okay so my paintings are usually found um, at Luxury Photography Studio right. in Jasmine Dean. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's number nine. Like, right. Yes. And then, apart from that place, I'm about to showcase them at Walumba Resort, also Dr. Reza Siatwambo's uh, lodge. Lodge, yes. Right. And that's the uh, privilege and opportunity that I got after the exhibition. So I'm going to take them there. You can also find them there. Then. You can normally just contact me, uh, reach out on my social media platforms, Instagram, it's smartarts2020, and on Facebook, smartarts2020. 